Our next intern will be Christina. Christina is studying liberal arts and she wants to eventually begin a career in international relations. She plans to transfer to Hunter College to study this and she, to that effect, speaks French and Spanish. She's a member of ASAP, which is an accelerated program here at the college. Christina expressed in her application how she, be, she had been incredibly interested in the history of World War II since she took a class in ninth grade. And it was this class that led to her interest in an international relations career. She wrote, as a result of World War II, the United Nations was created, and it was amazing to see how different countries with different cultural tradi traditions, economics, and politics are able to work together and maintain some sort of balance in this world. And upon graduating, my main goal is to seek an internship in the United Nations. So Christina interviewed survivor Steve Berger, who also was unable to be here today, so she's going to come up and tell us his story. So first of all, thanks all of you for taking the time of being here. My name is Christina Utreras, and I just graduated from Quinsboro like two weeks ago. <laughs> That's better? Yeah. Yes, okay. And Steven Berger was the survivor I, was, I had the honor to interview. Before I start telling you about his story and my experience in this internship, I will just like to briefly tell all of you why I decided to take it. Like Marissa said, I became very interested in history. And at the beginning, it was just about learning dates, battles, names. But when I got to the Holocaust, it was just a totally different experience to me. After that day in class, I just went home and I typed the Holocaust in Google Images. And I was just horrified by everything I saw. But that, I didn't let that stop me of learning. And I decided to just keep educating myself about it. Uh, about the United Nations and everything that related to them. In this internship, I wanted to gain more knowledge about the Holocaust itself, but my main objective was to really understand how something like that could have happened, how it was, and how it affected everyone who went through. Well, I didn't find my answer, and I don't think I will never do, because no matter how many books I read, no matter how many documentaries I watch, or how many stories I hear, I will never be able to understand that, or understand how people went through that. And the most amazing thing to me is how they're now here, they moved on, and they're a very successful person. Stephen was born in Hungary in 1927. Hungary, since it was an ally of Germany since the beginning of the war, didn't experience um, a, a murder until 1944 when they occupied Hungary. Stephen told me that he had no idea what a concentration camp was. He didn't know what was going on with the Jews in, in Europe. He was 16 when they came. They took his father away to a labor service. He was lucky enough to stay with his mother and his 12-year-old sister. They were taken into a ghetto where they spent, a, he said, a four or five weeks there. And then they were transported to a concentration camp around Vienna. Three days, three and a half days that he spent there in a cattle uh, van where he was transported was there's just not words to describe that there was no food there was no water they had to stand there people were committing suicide he said the spell was unbearable the experience was just horrible then he was taken into a labor camp in Vienna where he stayed for around um, a, uh, a year he said that somehow luck was always with him and now he's able to tell our story he was liberated in April in 1945. There was no commanders there, and he told his mom and his sister, we gotta get out of here before they come back. Has to take a lot of courage, determination, and willingness to do that because I would be very scared. I wouldn't just not know what to do. He said you never know what you're capable of until something like that happens to you. He was able to escape to a building that it was near then, and then Russian officers came and he was liberated. 
This is important, and I think Stephen and I will agree that history is so important because it keeps repeating itself. It may be different names or places, but it keeps repeating. So to understand how our society is now, we need to take a look back to everything that has happened before. This has provided me with an amazing experience to value my life. We are all so grateful to be here, to have a roof on top of our heads, to have food every day. And sometimes we complain about just the smallest stuff and it's not worth it. Steven is so happy, so full of life that makes me think about mine. What have I done? That's why I decided to start my career in international relations because I believe I can make a change. Somebody once told me you cannot pretend to change the world by yourself and I don't pretend to change the world by myself. But I think that if every one of us do our own small part we don't need to go to Africa to volunteer or donate big amounts of money to organizations. But help someone with their groceries. Open the door to someone. If you have a day off, volunteer in your local school or in a local center around your house. We don't have to wait until something like the Holocaust happens again to become conscious, to respect and care for others. Because I think that's what we lack, respect for others. It's not your Jewish, your Christian, or nationalities or race. We are all human beings and we all deserve respect in the same way. I am really happy for the opportunity because I feel that just educating ourselves in internships like this and the college itself is what's going to prepare us for, for the future. Like everybody said, when we hear the story, we share it with our families and our families will share with someone else. And Stephen's bigger concern was that when he's not able to tell his story longer, what will happen? So now, not just the interns, but every one of you who's here have a compromise, have an obligation to make sure this doesn't end here. This keeps continuing. Everybody needs to know what happened. Everybody needs to know what could happen. And everybody has a commitment, a compromise with the world that we live in to make sure that doesn't happen, to make sure everybody learns about it. And if you're upset with a family member or a friend or something, after this, go, call them, hug them, because you have the opportunity now. Let's not wait until we don't have them no more. You have grudges, resentment, let those go too. Life is so beautiful that we need to be grateful and just make sure nothing hurts us no more. So that's my message with you. Take this forever, never forget it, make sure everybody knows, and never forget that we all have an obligation and a compromise with our world, with Stephen and with all the survivors to make sure this doesn't end here. Thank you.